Hey there, I wanted to show you this because I'm quite pleased with it and I think there's lessons to be learned. This is the um, McNaughton Tartan. It's, base, it's based on, broadly based on the black watch with a couple of red overstripes. And the customer and I, it's a customer is at a distance. He's on the other side of the country, although he's flown in today for his final fitting and he'll be taking the kilt away. But we had a bit of back and forth about how to pleat it. Um, and because as usual, I, I emailed him pictures of all the pleating styles and um, I nudged him towards this because <clears throat> had we pleated this to the set, from any distance at all, it really wouldn't be that distinguishable from the Black Watch or, or the Campbell Tartans. But by pleating it to the double red stripe like this, we've got um, maximum number of pleats and they're very narrow, so we have a richer effect. And I think we have an extraordinarily pleasing contrast, a very subtle one, but very striking at the same time, between the, the, the pleats and the apron. And this um, raises another point. A customer had recently asked, why I shape my aprons as I do, that they're minimally shaped, as opposed to another example, which I'll show you in a minute. And that's because with my level of service, with Bespoke, I'm taking the time to work out the math to do all of my tapering in the pleats and a minimal amount of tapering in the apron. And it, 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 there's so broadly, there's two, two ways to do it. There's my way and the way I'm about to show you. I like this way. Um, for a number of reasons, which I'll delineate when I pop out that other one. But broadly, I, I spend all of my time figuring out how to accommodate the shape in the pleats. But let's take a look at another kilt, which I'm altering right now. And this one isn't bespoke. <coughs> I, I think it's possibly off the rack. But it shows what I mean about a really dramatic taper, the, which we call the A-line, because it's practically a letter A, as you can see, it's quite dramatic there. And they achieve that w by a bit of careful sort of cloth origami, as we can see. We can see they've, they've folded it and pressed it and folded it again and pressed it again to get that shape. Um, both, you know, both ways have, are valid. I don't like this one personally because <clears throat> I can't find a way to fold it so that you can't feel that extra bit of cloth under there and it's it's annoying to me because once I feel it I just can't stop playing with it right so I prefer my method because it pr produces a flatter front I, I believe and again not not judging not assigning values but I believe that it's possible that this style with a with um, not much shaping in the pleats this goes from three quarters to five eighths um, and all of the all of the dramatic shaping done in the in the apron i believe maybe it might be a characteristic of stuff that's uh off the rack as it were because you can you can batch these things out by all by never really altering the your pleat values at waist and hip your measurements at waist and hip and then achieve the shaping at the end so you could pre-make these kilts the, the, the pleating and then do the shaping to fit the individual customer i believe i don't know but um but yeah, there's the two methods. I prefer mine because I believe it gives a better fit and it doesn't produce that unsightly, annoying bump on the inside. So there you are. Thank you.